I'm just letting folks know John has a work related event, so he's not going to be here tonight. Can I copy you? Sure. So, is there any public comment on items not on the agenda? Hmm. Hearing none. Additions or changes to the agenda? Anybody have anything? All right, let's get started. Um, usually Alfred is, comes, but I don't see that he's here. Let's do um, the road naming thing first, and then maybe Alfred will show up and we'll be here for the discussion on the truck lease. So um, this is perennial fields, Meg Hawkins. I'm actually going to repeat myself. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just looked at I used to have a. Mm -hmm. You have okay, a. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to go in there. Do the orders come back? Yeah. I have to repeat myself in this one. Oh, okay. Um, anyways, so perennial fields is at um, getting ready to get up and going, and they need to have us approve their road name, and they would like to have it called perennial. Is it perennial fields or perennial field? Field, one field. One field. Prevent perennial field lane and it has to have PVT for private. So um, I want to make sure we got the spelling right. P E R E N N I A L. P E R E N N. Pretend you're on the keyboard. Yeah, so I know. <laughs> P E R. Two N's. Two N's, yes. Okay. Um, so usually what we do, we've had several of these this in the last year. I think you're either three or number three or number four. And um, the sign, you know, has to be E911 standards for emergency services and so forth. So the town buys the sign and installs it. And, but just so you know, we're also working on a policy now so that going forward, you know, we, we probably will have the same consistent protocol where we do this, you know, the the purchasing and the installation, but we're looking at probably having it so that if it's more than so much long, the owners have to pay this additional amount, and then if it gets stolen, that you would re replace it. Because we have a, one particular sign in town that gets stolen all the time, and if we leave it spelled wrong, nobody steals it. <laughs> but then we get complaints because it's spelled wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, would anybody like to make a motion to approve the signage? So moved. Second. Okay, any, anything you want to add, Mike? No, I just, you know, want to make sure I, you had mentioned the, the length of it might impact. Is it that it actually has to be? Oh, it's going to be. It's, it's going to be really long. That big, at least. It's going yeah. to be, I know, so, Toby can tell you. If it, if it so, so, this, so that sign would require two posts because of the yeah. length of the, you know, the name. Per perennial field. So it would require two posts. Um, and I, I don't, well, we don't have a policy yet on what the extra cost would be, so we'll write right. it up. Mm -hmm. But they haven't set the policy about right. what, what a standard cutoff number of letters is mm -hmm. for. Right. right, and I don't feel and like that we would only occur for you if it got stolen. Right, I mean, mm -hmm. this, this time around, there'd be no charge right. whatsoever. Yeah. So if it was shorter, if it was just perennial lane, mm -hmm. this has been ad nauseum. You can imagine. Oh. That's eleven people. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> have fun with that. <laughs> then it would only be one post versus two. Um, I, don't, I don't know yeah. what the, I don't know Again, what the it's about how how long it actually is. Depending on that size, I could find out for you whether it's just more or not. Well, to me, I think I would like if it's okay. You have another meeting coming up. This is not dire that we have to get this done right now. Oh, okay. I thought you um, said you wanted to. Oh, I, I did. Because just so I could check something off a <laughs> really long list. On the list that I have to do. Um, but to me, it just seems very imposing to have two, you know, it's like, it's just a little. Houses are down there. It mm -hmm. doesn't look, it's going to look like a super hot, you know, mm -hmm. it's already going to be a, a big change. And I just wonder if the group really understands the implications of that name being so long and that there'd be two posts right. versus maybe one. Right. 
So I would request, actually, that I go back to the group and explain that to them. Okay. And, and maybe take a look at a couple of slides that are have to post so you can see what the impact of it is yeah. so you can understand. Yeah, yeah. Where, where would she find that? Lightning, like that? Ridge, maybe? Lightning Ridge. Lightning Ridge. Yeah. That's the sign that keeps getting uh -huh. stolen. Oh, is it? Um, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to steal ours. But anyway, it's just the name. But um, so if you could... Uh, double check Toby though to make yep. sure that if we went down to perennial lane because that was I think the second name I'll find out what the cutoff point is for a that second that would be helpful that would be great. Great. and then we have to have the PVT on it right mm -hmm. so if you could clarify sure. that would be fabulous so okay sorry to take up your time but I think it's worth no. revisiting yeah. 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 all right so I guess we're going to table the motion okay um, the next meeting, uh, we'll be ready by the next meeting, which would be the 24th. 24th okay. So okay. Sorry to take up your time, but it's helpful, and um, mm -hmm. I just feel it's worth. I don't know. If you want to withdraw the motion, that may be easier than just. I'll withdraw. No, no. I'll just I'll, I'll check. And if Alfie's here, you might know the actual number mm -hmm. he shows up. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to be doing something in the hallway, but I'll try to be quiet just with some of our other stuff. And then I know. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You're, you're, you're welcome to stay. It's I know, I know. It's really, fun it's really warm and cozy in here, but I think I'm going to try to go home. Okay. Okay, thank you. I understand. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about lease, truck lease options. Thank you for doing this. Mm -hmm. So the, I was confused because it says here 2012. Well, that was the truck that we were replacing, so that's why it's. Oh, okay. Us. That's the truck that's going away. So, it, so probably the first thing you ought to talk about is what you want to buy for a warranty, because there's mm -hmm. we get, I give you a list of options. Right. And. We sort of have to tie that down before you actually get a real quote on what the value of a lease um, purchase is. Is the warranty figure? So, so if you look at this warranty yeah. page, okay. And then I sent you the copies of what those things included. Each one of the levels has a different yeah. inclusion of what it does. So the, the EW is for engine warranty, and mm -hmm. engine warranty four is the top um, the most comprehensive, mm -hmm. and that's a seven year warranty. This is the 4315? Mm -hmm. Correct. That's probably what we recommend on the engine. Mm -hmm. So we've never in the past had a truck coverage warranty. So there's another whole level of things on the truck, not just the engine, but on the truck. And we've never had that in the, in the past. Why, um, why not? Well, because it just wasn't offered and it wasn't around and it wasn't a seven-year truck okay. warranty. So um, it's hard to know whether we should go full bore on the truck coverage or not. I mean, essentially, if you look at truck coverage four, it includes the steering, the exhaust system, the emissions, supplemental devices, the cabin hood, instruments and gauges, uh -huh. transfer case mounts. So we've never had a problem with any of those items. So if we want to save a little bit of money on warranty, maybe uh -huh. we go to TC3. So that has uh, braking wiring in the fuel system. Again, the, we have had occasional brake issues, but they're not, they're not super expensive. And you know, brake pads and stuff like that is probably not warranty. So again, that may be something that we don't need to purchase do we, this time around. How often do we have to do any of these under TC3? For instance, brakes, um, fuel systems. So we do suspension work, you know, shocks and, and springs um, on both the front and rear. Is that something we do ourselves, or is that Sometimes good? we do, but if it's under warranty, we wouldn't have to. Right, right. Um, and it would be paid for. Um, cooling is really important. That's sort of a big thing. You know, when the radiator has issues, that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's an important thing to make sure that mm -hmm. we have the cooling piece, because that also affects the engine performance and the engine reliability. 
So you might get away with TC2 mm -hmm. and not have to worry about braking and wiring and fuel. We've never had a fuel issue that I'm aware of in the 10 years that I've been on the board and been supervising the, the road crew. Um, so, so I would say EW4 is a good selection. TC2 is a good selection unless you want to, I mean, that's your decision if you want to up it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> axles, we've really never had any issues with axles for $240. That's really nothing. Transmissions, we've never had an issue with a transmission. And so the towing, um, that's probably if the truck breaks down and we have to tow it to get warranty work, that's probably worth putting in as, a, as an item. So essentially it'd be $43.15, $26.20, and $800. And mm -hmm. that would then give you your total um, chassis price, body price, and the warranty pieces. And that would give you, that would give you roughly a total of $192,560. So this for the for the actual lease per lease purchase figure. So the forty three fifteen, for instance, that's for the full seven years. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So if you break that down into a year, it's not it's not that bad. Right. And what did you say the price was? One ninety two what? Uh, so the total uh, cab chassis body plow <clears throat> and warranty would be one ninety two five sixty. So that's the number that you would then want to get a, a quote right. on. That's with EW4 and TC2. Correct, yeah. and towing. And towing. And towing, right. That's probably a smart recommendation. Okay. So. Has Alfred stated a preference? We've talked about it. He's, yeah, I, I think he was just saying we should do TC4 we can change that number. That's up to you guys. I'm, I haven't had that discussion specifically with him. I think TC2 makes sense. Well, you want to get the cooling at the very least. And right. the, other, the other issues are yeah. things that you might not um, ever mm -hmm. get your money back on it as far as warranty issues go. But if you want to, you know, want to ask one more step to, to Alfred before we commit to that. Then, mm -hmm. And we had asked the question before, but maybe you could verify it one more time. Um, this is a transferable warranty, so if we sell it five years down the road. Um, I, I'll find that out. I don't know that fact. Okay. I don't That'd know be great. Yeah. yeah, that would be helpful to know, because that was one of the right. questions we had. Okay. And we're under the impression that it is, so it would be good to nail right. it down for sure. Right. So. Yeah, I think if you buy it, it goes with a truck, but I'd have to clarify. I'd have to yeah. get that confirmed. Thank you. So are we keeping trucks for five years or seven years? The goal has been seven years, and we've actually been at eight or nine on some trucks. We've been beyond the, the seven-year target. Um, the trucks actually last well through the seventh year, and in the eighth year, they fall apart. And that's really, you know, sort of the... Yeah. And, you know, the only difference, if you shorten it up to five, you have maybe a higher trade-in value, but it's hard to know on a truck that's been used that hard whether those extra two years devalue enough to make it worth mm -hmm. making the swap. Uh -huh. The other thing, and again, I didn't have anything to do with this, but right now we have two trucks that are only two years apart. And what you want to try and do is stage them so that you're buying one every three or four years so that you're not having it carry forward. I mean, and that's right. part of what the capital plan is. Right. So I think, you know, our experience, and Alfie would confirm it, is that seven years is a good target mm -hmm. to keep the trucks. You know, they're not trouble, mm -hmm. they're, they're trouble free for the most part for the or seven years. Well, except for the one we have, it's a lemon. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, yeah. But it only had a five-year warranty that we got after we bought it, and it expired 30 days before it blew up. So uh -huh. well, that was just, it should have been painted yellow from the beginning. <laughs> that seven-year number is actually a good one. I, I know when I was in the transportation plan, we looked at that, and that seemed to be about the magic retirement. Seven? Yeah. 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 Beyond that, your value, I mean, it was, like Toby said, that return, you know, what you actually get on trade and drops uh -huh. fairly quickly. 
And but that also was where your repair curve really started catching up. But if we were to do it in five years, we would save money overall. And it would only be like $12,000 difference in the budget for, per year. Well, the, there's a difference between the lease and the replace. Yeah. So you can lease for five years and replace it in seven. And then for two years, it costs you nothing. And that's part of the capital plan is to have a nothing payment for three or four vehicles so that you're not paying for all five or six vehicles at the same time. And that's part of what, by looking at the capital plan, you try to understand, so what's the, what's the debt cost every year total for all of the things that are still, you know, in the fifth year and the seventh year or the first year and the eighth year and how they stack up. And that's really what you want to look at is, um, you know, is seven years a good mix over time to keep that number pretty level for the budget or is five years better because of when you, um, when you change the... Uh, is that you? I don't think so. It sounds like it's in the office. Um, it's annoying. It is. Um, so essentially, I punched in, and again, the lease value is mm -hmm. not an actual number based on what we've gotten from mm -hmm. a vendor. Mm -hmm. But there's an online calculator from one of the um, from one of the lease vendors, and they say, you know, calculate this, and they print prices. And mm -hmm. actually, the one in Vermont was the lowest value yeah. or cost. So. You know, they're all pretty much the same. It's a lease yeah. purchase agreement. Um, and um, so you want to This was this municipal leasing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and I don't know where they, they came out of the blue. They came, they came to us. I don't know who told them that we were looking at a truck, but I got that off. That came out of the blue. I didn't solicit that. Hmm. I solicited the community sure. leasing in the, uh, sure. in the Bay Stone. Okay, so do you want to... Um, what do you want to do, folks? Do you want to decide, or do you want more information about that? Um, so let me, let me just sort of, so the, the, two, the two charts I gave you, the five-year lease and the, yeah. and the seven-year lease. So if, again, what you're looking at is the bottom line that says total, it, essentially across the bottom, and that's the total of, of your indebtedness mm -hmm. each year. So right now we're at 97000 mm -hmm. If you... Do a five-year lease. Next year, it'd be one hundred and forty-two thousand. So that's a forty thousand yeah. dollar increase. But just remember, we are selling the old truck for about that amount. So that actually would cover mm -hmm. that one bump Hopefully in the five years. That much out of it. Right. And then if you look at the following years, you know you're you're down to one twenty-four, eighty-three, one hundred nine, one twenty, one eleven, one eleven. So it's pretty consistently mm -hmm. in the hundred thousand plus or minus going forward yeah. for the entire seven years. If you go to the seven-year lease, um, what you see is you start at 97, you're only up to 130 in the second year. You have a couple of low years, but then at the, in year seven and six and seven or seven and eight, you're up to 140 again because mm. you've got multiple trucks that you're paying for in one year. Well, so the five-year the five year lease actually would be a better capital plan Procedures because five you wouldn't year. five year because yeah. you wouldn't have them all stacked up in those last two years. Right. So so if you and again so if you do a five year lease, there'll be less interest too. I don't know. Right. The interest difference was about eight thousand dollars. If we do a five year lease and the truck versus lasts. a seven and no. the truck lasts for seven. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 The truck is always going to last for seven. So the, the the point is to keep the truck for seven years. Right. Just however however you want to pay for it. What we're trying to do is balance that into the capital plan so that you're not having those ups and downs. Right. And it's then better for the tax. Plenty of, you know, four or five trucks all being paid for in one year or, or four or five right, pieces right. of equipment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the goal to, to then only go with a five year lease but, but keep the truck for seven years. So let me ask replace. you this then when we get into budget season, are you going to be asking for any equipment <laughs> that's going to jack up these figures? Not that I'm aware of. We don't need a new. We don't need any graders or. Nope, they're not. They're not quite in the plan yet. So, okay. and we're trying to extend the life of them because. Yeah. They just keep going. Good. Energizer bunnies. Yep. As long as we're not replacing motors, and they, right. they still do the work. 
So it would still be on track, basically, with what we're So the rest here. of the plan is pretty much, yeah, unless something has a major mm -hmm. failure. Major meltdown, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, just from, I just think it makes sense to just do it for five and then we keep it for seven. Right. And that way, it just makes sense to me with interest rate savings and that kind of thing. Well, again, it, it level funds that budget line for five years mm -hmm. or almost seven years. It right. It stays at 100000 that. You know that that debt payment out of the highway budget would would stay pretty consistent. Consistent, right? And that's right. what we're looking for. But again, these are just estimates. I mean, these are ballpark figures. They're not the interest is who knows if it's dead on or whatever right. because every loan has a different interest rate. Okay. So it's all pretty much it's a big picture mm -hmm. look at the numbers. It's not the exact number. If you put the exact numbers in, there may be a, 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 a shift up and down, yeah. but not significant. So for this. Select board, do you have any more questions? So the, the lemon truck, is that the one listed on the top line, 10-wheeler? Yeah, 2012, 2012. 10-wheeler. 10 so that still shows payments going out? No, those payments those are the ones the, that, that we would get to replace oh, that would be the, the, new replace one, the right. replacement truck. Okay. Right. And you estimate you're going to get about 35000 for it, maybe? Well, Alfie's been talking to somebody that has mentioned that they would get up to forty-five for it. Mm -hmm. Whether or not, and that's in January, and whether or not that comes to fruition. Comes this, oh, this is but it's running okay oh, right now? It's, yep, it's on the road. Oh. <laughs> Today. Today. <laughs> yeah, squeeze some lemons when you get home. All right. Scott had a question? Yeah. Uh, how many, how many uh, plowed gravel trucks do we own? Uh, well, we own. Can we this new one? We own four large trucks and one one ton. Four large trucks and, and how many drivers do we have? Not counting Alfie. Right, we have four. <coughs> well, three not counting Alfie, but Alfie plows the one ton. Yeah. So you said we had four. Right. We've always had a spare. Yeah. That's We've always had a spare. Which one's the well, spare on here? How much money would the we save? The 2009. How much money would we save this year if we sold the spare and took it out of the rotation? Well, the problem is that every time a truck goes down in the middle of a snowstorm, now you only have three trucks to plow four routes. Yeah. And that becomes an issue. So the spare truck actually is a great asset. And I think it was Junior Singleton that decided to keep the truck one year instead of trading it in. And we've always had a spare since then. So it's been a historic advantage to the town um, to have that extra truck. And it's totally paid off. And just essentially, it's there to be used if we need an extra truck. Which we have it, recently because of the mm -hmm. one truck that the engine blew up. Right. And it's... It's been, that 2009 has been getting a lot of work right now, and there's a lot of work we would not have accomplished. We would have had to rent a truck in order to replace it if we didn't have a spare truck. So it's, you know, it's essentially paid for minor maintenance on it um, unless something goes wrong, and, you know, we just keep, it just, again, keeps going. And the big truck went down in March, excuse Sorry. me. It went down in March, right, the big truck, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. yeah. I mean, any truck in our stable, as you well know, Toby, cost us one seventh of the cost of a new truck every year, right? We're depreciating, the, or, or are we not depreciating? Them? Well, we're, we not plan to buy the, the new. <coughs> well, that particular truck is well, and one of the reasons it, it's a gem is because it doesn't have the emissions controls on it that. Are a problem with all the new trucks. Right. So. right. But owning five trucks means we're going to be replacing five trucks. Right. So we need to set aside every year budget money for that replacement, which is coming in seven years. And for a $200,000 truck, how much is that? That's a lot of money. And that's what it's cost. That's what that truck is costing us every year. Well, what was that's what we could get by selling it. Right, but uh, again, the spare the spare truck essentially is a truck that we don't trade in. So eventually, one of the other trucks will become the spare. We'll sell that spare, 
because it's that old. And so they'll just come on, Toby. <laughs> it's a real truck. We're going to replace it. We have to consider the annual cost of that truck, and that's one seventh of its replacement value. Are you talking about the spare truck, Scott? Any truck, but have, I mean, don't call it the spare truck. It's it's the excess truck. It's the no, it's the it's the truck that. Truck number we're, five. We're, yeah, it's the it's the fifth truck for a crew of three. Um, a uh, crew of four. What no, Alfie never drives those trucks. He only oh, he drives does. the one ton. Well, he does do the He drives the them to the repair shop, yeah. <laughs> but he never gets in them to, to plow or right. deliver gravel. Well, Toby's position, though, is also there's a different side to that, and that is, you know, you take a truck down like that, you kind of take a crew down. I mean, you, how much labor gets, you have a truck down in the summer, it doesn't slow your workload, your productivity down, too. So, I mean, I... It is a double-edged sword. It's not that uncommon. I mean, I don't know what our, you know, with our what's trucks. Not, what's not? I mean, to have something like that if you can maintain it cheaply enough, which, because that, that you, you've got the equipment when you need it. They mm -hmm. go down and it's not there to use. So that generally impacts your workload. So I don't know what the frequency is that we have with, with trucks, you know, out of service. But I think that's the way you kind of look at it and say. What is it costing us? Not just on the mechanics, but on the labor. Well, and, and the other thing that's really sort of most important is in the middle of a snowstorm when a truck goes down, yeah, now good. you only have, yeah. in your scenario, if we only owned four trucks, we'd yeah. have three trucks to do four routes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it would double the time that it took to clear the roads for the public. So well, That's why we do such good maintenance. Well, but We're doing no matter, well, we do great maintenance, okay. but things happen. I mean, when was the last time you couldn't drive your car around town? Mm -hmm. Well, Mike, I don't pay as much for my car as we pay for that. And this whole concept of this is a cheap spare truck is just bogus. This truck will be replaced at the same cost as a brand new truck. And we're committed to that. You see that? I mean, if, if we've got this truck and it gets to the certain age, then we're going to buy a brand new truck to replace it. We'll push one, an older truck, to the back of the queue and call that the cheap spare. There is no such thing as a cheap 10-wheel, $200,000 dump truck. There is just, it's, it's just a bad concept. Uh -huh. Is that worth it to us? I don't think so. You can, rent, you can rent trucks, you can borrow them from other towns, there are lots of lots Well, that's of what happens with our spare, is other towns have borrowed it. Yeah. Um, does the warranty give us any, like if the truck breaks down, does the warranty include that they will provide us a truck to use while the other one's being fixed? No, no such thing. No. We can buy that. No, there, I guess there's There is no warranty yeah. like that. There's no, there's no, we'll give you a car to drive while we're, you know, a plow truck is a very specific piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's designed for each town. They choose their plow and their transmission and everything else, so it's very specific to the operators. And plowing is very hard on trucks. It's very hard on the mm -hmm. frames, yeah. everything about it. So that's why they, they tend to be more prone to problems, too. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening. I don't need to take up more of this. But Sharon, you had a, it's a, yeah, I mean, what it's I a was, concept. Yeah. What I was hearing from Toby, though, is that before we had this I'm going to keep calling the spare truck so we can be yeah, clear. So we all know what it is. Which truck mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about. But before we had that, <coughs> we would have sold that truck right away as soon as we finished. We, or we would have traded it. it. We would have traded it. For the newer truck, right. For whatever truck was being right. replaced. And now, and now we have an extra one that isn't necessarily directly part of that cycle mm -hmm. because we've got one that we're using as a spare and one that we've paid for and we're not trading. Right, so the, the spare, quote unquote, spare truck is a 2009, so it's well beyond its seven year life. Right. So it's, you know, it's hanging in there, it's, you know, hanging on with its little knuckles and mm -hmm. staying in place mm -hmm. when we need it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, but it's not getting used every day other than the fact that it if there's a truck down that we can't be doing a project, then we jump in the other truck. So it gets limited use. It's not being right. fully. Well, and so to go to Scott's point, to me, the way to, to frame it would be 
just looking at that truck in isolation, that spare truck, whichever one it, it is in the life of spare trucks, versus the cost of maintaining that truck and insuring it, whatever else we're doing for it, versus uh, renting a truck when we need it. Right. I mean, isn't so, that so really the, that's really the math. I don't so the issue is we cannot or... rent a plow truck in the wintertime. There's no such thing. So there's no such thing. So, so, it's, so, so it, is a, it is a lifesaver for the road crew in the middle of winter when a truck goes down. For so, whatever yeah. reason, it might go down. So it's a different equation. It's, it's in the, the summertime for hauling gravel, there might, we can hire trucks to come in and haul gravel. So it's not as essential in the summertime. It's total winter. Uh, it's an insurance policy for winter. And this and, and this, and we have more plowed roads in this town than any other town in the state of Vermont. And this winter, we're, the truck that we're looking to lease isn't even going to be available until January. January. Right. So we will be using that spare truck to plow the only roads. If there's, only if there's a breakdown. More town? Well, well is, is. We have 60, yeah. 73 miles of, Cal of road Cal in Cal our town. one of the most back roads of any town in the state of Vermont. That's what we're saying, the town plows more. Right. Forget about the state. You know. Right, no, it's all out the town. But is the... For, per town, I mean, is, I think Woodbury has 18 miles. Is the truck that's currently broken down the, the lemon or the 2012, whatever we're calling it, is that back in service now? Mm -hmm. But it's been back one, one other time. Right, it's, it just doesn't... It, it, yeah. yeah, the sooner we get, get it off the road, the better. Right. Well, and also we're concerned that if we keep using it and it breaks down again, right. we're not going to be able to get much out of it in trade or sale. Yeah. No, we're using judicious use of it. So is it a grounding issue with that new engine or was it the ECN? I know there was a lot of darts they were throwing at it to settle it you down. You mean the 2012? Mm -hmm. um, so international, when the emissions started to really be an issue nationwide, tried to program emissions through sensors and heat recirculation in the, in, and regeneration in the exhaust system. Everybody else went to the DEF fluid, and they didn't. And those motors, for a span of about three or four years, were just crap. They didn't solve it, and they had these continuous problems over and over and over again. Um, it's, you know, the cooling fan doesn't come on when it needs to, and it just a whole bunch of issues. So, okay. it, you know, unfortunately that was a truck we bought that was available then, and it was just a bad Well, yeah, bad there, was a, there was a clock. But every, every, every other 2012 international truck had the exact same problems. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, I'm not sure they've ever solved them in any of their trucks. It doesn't sound like it from what Alfred's told us over the last several meetings. No, it's... It's yeah. just been a real problem. Yeah, it's conflict. So, Thank you. board members, what's your pleasure? Do you want to think about it, or what do you want to do? Well, I think you had an important question just to make sure that when, um, if we sold it at five years, there's still two years left on the warranty. Okay. But um, other than that, I mean, I think it's a good idea to go with the five-year lease and those warranty. Mm -hmm. The ones that we talked yeah, about. Yeah, we talked about, yeah. EW4, TC2, and the towing. Mm -hmm. So that, so that gives you the number. I've actually talked with Sandra about contacting those vendors because she's going to have to give them all the information anyway so um, she can get the quotes for... Are you okay with that? For, I'm sorry. For the leasing, the, the five-year five leasing? We talked about that. Uh, I, thought you, I thought you were going to do that initially. Well, I did do the seven, and then I talked with her, and she said she would be... Because she's going to have to give them all the financial information once you get the quotes back. So, if you want, I can I can get the numbers. I mean, it's very simple to get yeah, the quotations. Yeah, I mean, she's just bogged down with That's taxes fun. and audits and all that. So if you could do that, that would be helpful. Okay. And then. So and then, like you did with the seven, I'd be interested in your evaluation once we get the proposals. To five versus seven, mm -hmm. as far as the interest and. I, th I think Toby makes a good point looking at how the five-year lease affects the capital, capital plan. plan right? and the expenditures. And, do you um, have that? Did you get it? I sent that to you, right? Yeah. And, um, and 
you know, you want to look at the savings, the interest savings, which I don't think is a lot over between the two. Well, just the estimates I looked at, there's almost an eight thousand dollar difference between the two. And Seven versus I five. Eight thousand dollars is a lot of money. But. <laughs> It, it's a lot, but spread out over yeah, seven years or five years. But I think that the big, um, the, the question that bears the greatest scrutiny is how does it affect the financial plan over five years? Oh. And I think he's got that. Yeah, I think it actually looks like it makes it more stable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, over yeah. five years versus seven. Right. Yeah. Um, so I will reach out to the vendors and give mm -hmm. them the new number and ask for a five-year quotation. Right, and then you and I'll get I'll get that all to you guys, and you guys can go from there. Right. So and then you have to choose whoever your vendor is, right? And she'll have to have conversations with them about the information that. And you're going to find out about the transferable warranty, or do we have a definite answer? I don't have an answer. Okay. Right now. All right. Perfect. That'd be great. Thank you, Toby. Is that it. Thank you. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Do we have a warranty? Separate? Is that a separate vendor than the truck vendor? Uh, no, it's through. They sell it through the truck vendor. So, and we can purchase it up to like 30 days after the original purchase. So it's, yeah. but it does go through Charlie Voice. All right, and then that's how that's going to get hooked into the lease payment. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think we should just do wrap it all up into one. Yeah, that exactly. way, it's all in one place. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. All right, Madam Treasurer, you're on. Um, just for clarification, there was a cemetery order in here to, to sign. Right, it, it, for information purposes. Right, so we don't so sign that, right? Right, All right. right. just um, so you can See. check off the check numbers. Yeah. Short of getting them, um, there's separate checks that would start with a different number and be a different color. Yeah. I, I, so they just come out in the same run. Yeah. They, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because there was a couple of um, of orders that were in with the the big thick pile of orders that were cemetery, but they have already approved those orders separately. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about trucks again next meeting. Hopefully, get it resolved. So I think we're in good shape with that. <clears throat> we're trying to get some things crossed off our list of things to do before we start talking and, and getting into budgets and town reports and all that fun stuff. All right, so I see here some audit stuff. FY17, is there, is this enough copy? This is a copy for everybody here? Yes, it is. Right. Yes. Board, board. Thank you. So Denise is passing out the draft of the FY17 audit. Um, the auditors were in on Friday, but they were in for a work day not to discuss the findings of the FY17 draft letter. So those findings we would discuss with them at a later date. So this is not the mail order audit? Mm -hmm. That is, uh, it's the draft and it does not have the management recommendations for internal controls. Mm -hmm. It contains only the numbers. Okay. Um, they were, they simply did not have the time to sit with me. We worked right through until 4.30 and they were still acquiring, um, I would say, testing information in FY18 to complete the FY18 audit. They leave that the FY18 audit will be done by this week, the end of this week, I'd say probably by the end of next week. I will be reaching out to them Wednesday to see if they're on track with their own deadline. So maybe in two weeks? Yes. So my thought would be that a, a small working committee of the select board would meet with uh, the auditors to have a discussion and pose any questions that you might have in particular exactly what does that audit mean you know in a nutshell there are several pages there where are we financially what's our condition mm -hmm. and um, 
Another question I think that would that bears asking is what might be a good practice or practices for developing the highway fund balance? So there's some thought that that fund balance has been um, variously defined or calculated over a period of time. Mm -hmm. When I talked about that particular question with the auditors, their first question is, the highway fund balance is a legal concept, you have to ask your lawyer. So I think the better way of asking that question is, what are good practices for developing or identifying the highway fund balance with the numbers that we have? And then the select board and the highway department could select amongst those practices and make that part of your accounting policy going forward so that the calculation of that is predictable and it would alleviate um, conversations between the treasurer's office and the select board and the highway department as to what the numbers really need. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, Fred Duplessis would come in if that uh, FY18 is ready. Fred would come in as the partner who has reviewed it all and uh, discuss these matters with the board. As I said, if you wanted a more intimate conversation mm -hmm. just to kind of prime yourselves with what what your board might be I particularly like, I think interested I'd rather in. have him come in and talk to the full board. Um, because some a committee might think of some questions, but then you get everybody together, there's more questions, and you have to go back and forth and back. I think just having him come in, if he's available on the 24th, um, would be good. And you were going to ask him if, about that availability, if yeah. they have... If they have it done. Right. But I'm curious, because I'm we have FY17, they're almost done with that, this is draft. FY18, I don't want... When we're having discussions, I don't want to get confused which fiscal year we're talking about. You probably, it, it is up to the board mm -hmm. if you want to discuss each fiscal year uh, with Fred or focus on FY18. Mm -hmm. the, that is uh, the most recent right. fiscal year. This is where we find ourselves rolling into FY19. And it would be up to the board and Fred exactly what it is or which which mm -hmm. audit you wanted to focus on or if you wanted to give both audits uh, the same focus. Well, I think I'm interested on FY17 because that's when we transitioned. And I want to see what the management letter has to say about that. And, you know, we've made some changes since then, since we're in FY18. So I'd be curious to see when you're doing your work with them on FY18, Knowing how things were in FY17, you know, hopefully we've made some improvements already that they might note in FY17. But say in FY18, we've worked to correct some of these deficiencies or whatever they call it. I think by what material weaknesses? That's it. Well, and it 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 bolsters our all at least for me it bolsters my understanding of, of why why we switched and we all have a stronger basis of understanding what we have now. Yeah. We don't have to spend as much time on it. No, I don't think it, so. But just to, just to kind of stop and say, okay, here's some things we found that we don't have to talk about fixing because mm -hmm. no one fixes them. And I want to make sure we devote enough time to that meeting on the 24th. If we're going to do both, we might not have much of anything else on, on the, the agenda. agenda other than mm -hmm. perennial design and then the truck lease. I will keep you posted to to the information that I receive as I get it. Right, because I could see this discussion, you know, taking a while for us to really understand. Yes, it's a complicated document, and it looks at the financial um, position of the town from an auditor's or through an auditor's lens, which mm -hmm. which is. Um, very focused. It, it, well, it's a different focus than than we're used to looking at numbers. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be important to um, understand their concepts, but really from a layperson's standpoint, what do they really mean? Right. 
Right. Um, yeah, they have to be able to explain it in a layperson. And I am sure they'll be able to do that. I think so. Good. I th <laughs> that, that to me is a sign of a good auditor if they can do that. I think so. Uh, based on my conversations with Fred over the years, mm -hmm. I mean, this is part and parcel of their work. They work for municipalities, but we're not their only a municipal client. Mm -hmm. And I think they are used to conveying accounting concepts to select boards in terms that they're going to understand. Mm -hmm. One nice thing uh, about our um, auditing process now is that we are on a cash basis, and I did pose the question, how will that affect budgeting? And the question is, you know, checks in, checks out, Amount July 1 to June 30th, that's your year. There's no booking in, there's no booking out. What goes in and what goes out in that fiscal year is what builds, uh, is the information that informs the audit. So your budgeting would not change at all. Mm -hmm. You would be budgeting exactly, you'd be looking at your line items and projecting just the way you always have. Mm -hmm. It's the accounting process that changes, but not your budgeting process. Well, and it's especially important that we get this done because we're going to be starting to look at the next fiscal year. I think it would be it would be um, very important to the board to know what their general fund balance is mm -hmm. and what the highway fund balance is. Mm -hmm. um, because that gives you a feel for the, uh, well, for the position that we're in. If mm -hmm. we're in a deficit or not, do we move monies from the highway fund balance into the capital equipment fund or not? Right. How much? Right, and the cutoff is June 30th. It is so June 30th, that's so right. Whatever figures are there as of June 30th, that's what you go with. It, it would seem so, yes. So that's coming up, and um, I look forward to that. I look forward mm -hmm. to understanding what it is. Um, uh, very interested in getting opening balances for FY19 right now. Uh, the computer does not reflect any opening balances at all. So, um, you know, I keep an eye on the checking yeah. account and on the checks. We're in great shape. Not, no nail biting is required at this point, and um, I think we're going to be fine. Okay, so I guess for this part of the discussion, you're going to let me know if they're available to come on the 24th yes. to do both. If they're not available to do both, then maybe they could at least do the 17th. <coughs> but the goal would be to get this audit stuff wrapped up. I think they've been working really diligently on this by the sounds. Yes. And the amount of hours that you've put in. Yes. Friday, Saturday, just so you guys know. So, um, so we're really, you know, we're really getting after it, and I think that we're going to bring this to a conclusion. I would also uh, want to schedule our audit for FY19 mm -hmm. uh, uh, right away, so that we yeah, can right. get it done, and it would be done hopefully by now, mm -hmm. next year. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think that's kind of the schedule we're on with FY18. So that's. I think that gets us in the queue. I think so. In the queue to get. Okay. And once they've been through our books, um, it, I, I think it, it gets easier for them. Absolutely. And uh, and I also know how to best set up the files for them to get at, at them expeditiously. Right. Right. Okay. Sounds good. So on to your memo. Um, you said that you had a deadline for us that you worked out where? So uh, at... The last deadline for... At point three, um, the the memo is as it's really... It's truck? It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it might be called. Budget discussion packet. There it is. There it is. Okay. Thank you. So, if you, um, so the, the first item is just a, a review of the budget map. Can you scroll through that a little bit? And I use the high, whoops, there it is. I use the highway uh, budget as an example. 
This is um, what the NIMRIC budget looks like, very similar to what you're used to, other, uh, uh, except that the numbers. it has uh, different numbers mm -hmm. and it also groups expenses together. Uh, so general highway expenses are in your first category and then if you scroll down, you'll see there are, there's road maintenance expenses, mm -hmm. gravel, sand, salt, chloride, and then again, vehicle maintenance expenses. In your QuickBooks, um, vehicle repairs were in at one number. Highway asked that each vehicle be reflected in the budget so that um, we, so that they and the townspeople can get an idea of where we are, we're where spending. repair monies are being spent mm -hmm. exactly. I think that's helpful. Mm -hmm. And if you would scroll a little bit more, please, and you're going to see the town garage has its own set of. Mm -hmm. um, line items and then we go down to insurance that pertains to uh, the highway long-term debt um, which we don't have any at the moment and then capital expenses similar to the repair we have the expense line item that w that we actually just finished talking about with Toby and how that would fluctuate over time mm -hmm. So this year, uh, FY19 was budgeted at 96,000. Uh, Highway asked that um, that we break that out and break it out of principal and interest. And actually, that's just simply done for accounting purposes. So you're going to see, and you can see, we've already made two payments um, in this fiscal year the 16 with the 16 and the 17. Yes, yeah. with the uh, principal and interest broken out, and it helps in the uh, accounting process to uh, figure out what what our debt cost actually is. So the one the line that says new equipment. So new equipment was the line was the singular line item used previously, and now it's just broken down so into that's the each beginning balance. That is what we've budgeted for okay. our payments for FY19. Okay. So it, it doesn't, we're not adding to that line item. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just broken it down into smaller pieces. So where do you, where's the bottom line of how much is left of that 96? So of the 96, we've spent 37. Thousand three hundred eight seventy seven, and what is left is fifty nine. Okay, three thirty four twenty three. Wanted to make sure I understood that. Yep. <laughs> okay. So if you continue to scroll, um, Cliff and um, Denise thought it it might be helpful if you could kind of see how things line up. So the numbers on the far left are the old uh, QuickBook numbers. The new numbers are the NIMRIC numbers, and the descriptions just simply flow through. Any description that doesn't have a QuickBooks number beside it did not have a QuickBooks number. We, we simply added those. Right. So you can see the, the more detailed breakdown of the budget this way in NIMRIC than we used to see it in QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of information, but I think it's helpful. And is there a, a commitment to, uh, I think this is great, but it, it means that every, the expenses have to be tracked right through the end. Right. So when I get highway orders, and you've seen them, mm -hmm. they'll, they, uh, they, code the they code, they code to the line items on the, um, the, to the numeric line items. What we didn't budget for, if you, if you flip down just one more time, the, the one exception to uh, this is, oh no, it's not an exception, excuse me. You can see that we've added MRGP fees, right, we've added one. security, we've added radios and paging and unemployment insurance. Those items we did not budget for but highway, but we know they're coming. Right, I mean radios and paging, they must have gone in. They, Somewhere, but I don't know where. Uh, no, I think they picked up pagers. 
They've always, they've always had pagers. Huh. Okay. Well. Because I saw we have the pagers and stuff on the orders. Right. Yeah. What is MRGP fees? Municipal Roads General Permit yeah. Fee, which is $2,000 a year. Yeah. Which we hadn't previously budgeted for, but now we need to. Correct. And we just barely got the sign off that ours was approved. Because I sent signed it, sent it in, and we got the approval. So we don't have a choice. We have to do it as a state. Thanks. Go to the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that is uh, the end of that, just a comparison so you can see that while the budget will visually appear different, it is lined up with budget items that we, that the town has had in the I historically. Th All right, I think pagers and that stuff went under communications before. Yep. I'm sorry. It was a request. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I don't. That's fine. If they want it broken down like that. As long as they're coding it in when they give you the orders, and if they don't, I'm assuming that you say, "Hey, what do you want this under?" and they fix it, right? Yeah. Okay. That's exa exactly right. We work very closely together to Good. get their expenses into the right line item to mm -hmm. help them, you know, keep their fingers on the pulse of their right. budget. So if we scroll backwards a little bit, uh, were there any questions on that? <coughs> As I said, it really ha it has a different feel, but I'm getting used to it. But um, it it lines up. Mm -hmm. Just wish the item was a little bigger. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but we all do. <laughs> and wait, hang on. <coughs> Which one is the spare? It's not there because it's all paid for. It would only be there if there was an expense for a repair. Then okay. you would then you would probably create an, another numeric number to show that it's the 2009 whatever kind of truck it is. I believe it's in the repair the repair category. Oh, okay. okay. So when the new truck comes on, it would be added to that to that um, there is equipment capital expense. Oh, there it is. 2009. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I think that's supposed to be flipped. Don't the international. Don't be international. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very funny. funny. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, that's great. Like I said, I'm getting used to it because you know I come in every two weeks and do this, and I'm, the first time I was like, oh no. <laughs> so the, the idea is to help kind of clump up uh, the thought process. Clump up is that an official term? Clump, uh, that's, uh, that's. I understand those kind of terms. Yeah, clump maybe is a gardening term, but. Um, <laughs> But just to, to get expenses uh, that are related together so that they can be looked at together. So if we sc scroll back, we've hit... Um, so you said number three, the we, deadline, you were January 22nd? Right, so um, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna hop over number two. Um, just a quick, uh, the memo really is designed to um, refresh the board's memory as to what you do during budget time mm -hmm. and to also if you can see there are other things that you want to do this time that you haven't done in the past but you want to try that you make sure you make room for them in your meetings so you might want to shortly reflect on your historic approach to budget development. We mm -hmm. talked about uh, that there won't be any changes because we're on a cash basis right. as opposed to an accrual basis. Um, you'll be reviewing the condition of the town at, it, it, to help inform the board as to uh, you know ongoing budget, the ongoing budget process. <coughs> um, to, uh, you, you want to take maybe take a look at a, prelim a preliminary schedule and get one going. Your final budget numbers will need to be developed by January 22nd. That's the big day. So we are, what, what we um, work against in, in staff is um, two things. When does the warrant need to be posted, the final warrant? And the last day for that is February 3rd. And then also, when is the out? What is the outside date to get the um, town report to the printer 
And of course, that is driven by the statute that requires it to be mailed within so many days of town meeting. It's like 10 days or two weeks of before town meeting, something like Right, that. and during that time, it, we get a proof back, we have to review it, make changes. This, the final proof hopefully comes back and then mm -hmm. it goes to print. So that's the, I took a real good look at the schedule and at previous printer deadlines mm -hmm. and January 22nd, I think, is your, your really your drop dead Right, date. well it's, it's good that there's school board members here because they have to get us the information as well. Well, the school board information comes from the district. Yeah, I know, but just the same, we, that means they have to work on their budgets and so I'm good. sure, I'm sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so you want to take a, a real, you know, good look at the frequency of the meetings that you may, that you're going to schedule. Right. Uh, any additional meetings, of course, there's special meetings they need to be warned. Right. My and, brain's already thinking about meetings. That's right. I think uh, it would be really great for the board to feel that you have your budget. Um, well defined before we get into December. The days are short. Um, holidays. Fa families are traveling. There are holidays, and mm -hmm. gathering might be more um, gathering as a group or to have a quorum might be more difficult. Uh, you might want to consider, you know, how or the order of your department head presentations and what departments are going to come in. Who you want to see. We budget appropriations for various committees and programs, such as you know the trail funds, the mm -hmm. con uh, conservation commission, right. the swim program. They may you may want to invite them to come to a meeting and make a pitch. Right. That's what we usually do. Just so you know that typically we would have conservation commission, planning commission. You know, typically that's what we do, so we're on the same page. Your social search agency appropriations, I, that happens with the town clerk, and I think those are identified by December 15th, but there may be new ones, such mm -hmm. as Kellogg Hubbard Library actually may come in. Um, and oh, yeah, they always do. Come in via an article, mm -hmm. and um, we're going to need to look at projected revenues, mm -hmm. uh, any grant grants or programs of interest for FY20, and um, again, articles requesting appropriations. Uh, you, if the cemetery comes in again, requesting an appropriation via an article, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to want to see them. So there may be other considerations yeah. that you folks want to add to that list to make sure you hit. Um, my only thought would be it would be great if you gave a, a Tip, took some time at a at a meeting that soon in the next couple to develop your uh, calendar. Mm -hmm. If you need help with that, let me know. Okay, so what I what I would suggest is that I look at the way we've done it previously. Come up with a calendar, mm -hmm. who to invite in when, and present it to you guys and see if it, if it works. And that means more meetings for you, Sandra, too. That, but I would anticipate that okay. if um, you could share that calendar with me, what I would be able to do is uh, get out a, a budget, a blank budget mm -hmm. for those departments so they can scribble in or right. actually it would probably be a live spreadsheet sent digitally mm -hmm. that they could work on their budget. So we could further discuss it at a staff mm -hmm. meeting, the, the details of of that and then present it to the full board as, you know, does this schedule sound like it would work thing? Because I don't want it to be like we've been the last last year and even the year before at the last minute having to drive stuff to the printers. Well, and I also want to see if we can get somebody in town. I got to check with Judy about the name of the person, but he lives on County Road. And he did, Scott, he did the um, flyer for the town hall, and do you know? Do you remember his name? I know who you're talking about. Right to see if maybe he might help us with the graphic design piece. I think that's what he used to do, right? Um, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember yeah, his name? I don't remember his name, but already can tell us who it is. Yeah. So maybe yes, we can get some cheaper help, but otherwise we're going to have to find somebody. 
to do the graphic design piece because it's got to look better than it did last year. Well, you might want to uh, reach out to your printers and ask what mm -hmm. cost, uh, what additional cost m might be incurred if you use their graphic design department as opposed to using them simply mm -hmm. as a printer. Um, the other thing you might think about as a board is how are you going to approach your budget? You could, um, there's all sorts of, of methods and approaches you might say to everyone, go out with a flat budget and then pitch pitch us why why well, you want more. Why uh, one item or the other mm -hmm. needs to be raised. Well you I'm gonna ask them to do a um, what do you call that when it's not there's no increase. What's that called? Flat. 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 Level funding. Level funding. Mm -hmm. I so in that, that point with the, on the school budget side. Mm -hmm. And this is a very atypical year to go back forty six no idea what's happening. We've already had discussions around that. And if potentially if we're forced to consolidate, we're on, it's a very different scenario if we, than how we move forward now. We've talked, <clears throat> there's been discussion about if that were to happen and that's forced, if, um, we, you know, we may run you know, individual budgets for the following year because but that is a wild card for us that we can't really control for the time being. So I don't know what that's going. I mean, that may be not be until the end of November that we actually yeah. know what direction we're going. Well, so, it's, and uh, if we don't have something for the town report, you may have to hold, you know, a special school board meeting or something. I don't know. Awesome. But I'm sure that you know we work closely enough together that you can. We'll keep you right in the loop on this. Right. I, think, I think we'll have something on time. Yeah, I, 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 do, I do, do too. I'm just putting it out there. It, my last recollection of the conversation was that there's no way we could ever put together a budget that would be for like one okay. district. Mm -hmm. And we were just going to go forward with individual budgets. Like you usually do. That's like been the discussion still. possibly. And so year, I think we'll have that in hand. Mm -hmm. And then find a way to make it or go together or if we have to. Do. And there's always a hope that we won't have to. Right. Sharon, you're going to ask a question? Yeah, going back to the level of funding, um, I would like to hear from each of the budget owners, if you will. Um, certainly, certainly the the understanding of any proposed increases, but I would also, especially in the case of an increase, want to understand where there are efficiencies. We're hiding behind that flat budget. There are actually savings that we're not seeing that are offsetting some potential costs. Does okay. that make sense? Well, I'm, I'm going to suggest level funded and pitch why you need an increase and for what. Yes. So you. So what I'm saying is that when you start, when you make the assumption that you're going to start with a level funding, mm -hmm. you're not understanding where within right. the level funding there are there are efficiencies where things maybe are, you know, cost less or you have fewer people and how does that create savings that, right. I mean, that, are, that are helping us as, as, a, as a town? Well, there's not really much for departments. Conservation Commission, Planning Commission gets $800. So I don't want to make this, I, I think I understand what you're saying and we can ask them that, but I don't know that there's a lot of places they get a lot of money other than highway. Well, right. No, but that's huge. Yeah. Um, Conservation Commission has the conservation fund. Cemetery, that's up to them to sell it to the taxpayers, yeah. really. Um, but really, there's not a, nobody else really gets much for an appropriation, even we don't. Select Board doesn't. Right. There are items that are simply bills they're, that they're dues or the county taxes or your contracts with your emergency service providers that, um, I, that we don't have a lot of control over. But I, I hear what you said. So, well, so and you're looking really, for efficiencies within well, your current Maybe funding. what Sandra's saying is another way of saying it. Understanding what's in the level funding and why are we making an assumption of level funding. Yeah. For expediency's sake, you can go. You can start with that. You could start with a blank slate. You could start with zero base. You right. could start with a zero base and say, "Come in with your wish list." 
But you want to leave. If that's if you, your approach, you then that, you want to leave enough time for we can do that. Discussions. But it's going to take a lot longer to yeah. get to where we want to be. Yeah. It, there's more consensus building in that between mm -hmm. the board and the departments. Mm -hmm. um, so you might say, let's try and keep the budget down mm -hmm. to a 1.5% increase. I, and I just grabbed that out of the air. I could right. just as easily say a 10.5% increase. Mm -hmm. that I, that number, it was not. That's yes. a scary number. I should have said that. That that's, <laughs> Did you get that number? <laughs> that, 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 I didn't. I did not even think about that number. Where are the efficiencies? Um, but uh, you might start out there. There are various and sundry ways of approaching it, and the board can, is is the master of that, right. whatever you think might be most expeditious. Unless it's a difficult time right. to budget as you're going into the winter into the dark months when January 22nd is your, you know, mm -hmm. that is your real deadline. Right. This December could really be a bust. Right. And I just want us to also so remember when we're asking these groups all these questions and asking them to do things, they're volunteers just like we are. Right. So we can't, like, put them through the, the grinder. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I remember last year we met every week in December and January. Right. Um, and, so, and Sandra's suggesting that we might want to start that process earlier, which I'm fine with that. Yeah. Or, okay. You know, maybe start the Monday extra meetings in maybe middle in, the, of in the middle of October. So by the, maybe time you, by the time we get to January, maybe we don't have to, we don't have to do so right. many meetings. Well, and then we can it also it also takes that sense of pressure well, off if we, if we do Monday. have questions, which is. I just want so to feel like this is the one time of year where we actually do kind of look under the hood, mm -hmm. not not at the, at the budget, and we have to go and defend it at the town meeting. Yeah, no, I agree. So I think I think we have a good plan. Let me come up with a draft of something. I'll work with Sandra on dates and different things like that, and then come back. Does that sound like a plan? So it sounds like um, we should look at our own calendars and consider the possibility Mondays. that from the middle of October through December anyway we're blocking Mondays. Right. Yes. Yep. The other, the and if I might say, um, the other strategy you might consider is, you know, holding your business meetings. You, you have to have regular business meetings, of, of course, but on those extra meetings that there is no other business schedule, that you keep them just budget. Right. And Just what, budget. Right. And that's what we have done. So. I'm still going to have a third Monday conflict. So anyway, so that, just so you know, that is what we do. And it usually, just so we focus on that. And that way we have our other meetings to do the other stuff. And then these meetings are really, really just for budget, town report, that kind of stuff. Been there, done that. But thank you for your advice. <laughs> yep. J uh, just, just trying to bring an awareness. <clears throat> no, but I think we're on this. I think so. We're on we can page. move forward and not feel terribly pressured at mm -hmm. the end. No, I think we're on the same page. Yeah. Nobody likes to have it begun at the last minute. I did so. Mm -hmm. well, that's maybe not a good reference. Huh? <laughs> thank you. Any other thank questions? Thank you so much, for and thank you for your. Thank you. Extra time. I know you've spent a lot of extra time working with the auditors and getting auditors and taxes all in the same time. Yeah. How are the taxes going? Oh, swimmingly. Good. <laughs> good, good. They're coming in. They're, it's looking good. Uh, we really won't know what the tax effort, uh, what the net tax effort is going to be, of course, until after September 18th, after the grace period. But uh, they're... It seems to be doing very well. Steady flow. A very steady flow, like gusher. Kind yes. Of. Very good. good. Thank you so very much. Good. Thank you, All right. Sandra. Thanks. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, up next, Act 46. Huh, you know what that is? Hey. Join us at the table. Are we not doing Are a town sure? tonight? There's nothing. In town hall, there's nothing. Nothing. Tonight. Okay, so let's do well, our scratch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, scratch. On Thursday, it's going to be lowered back down. I think that's an important I'm point. sorry, what? On Thursday, the town hall will be back on its foundation. Oh, wow. It's oh, that's right. So that's, right. that's worth thinking about. That is yeah. worth thinking about. That, I mean, when that happens, everybody connected to the project is going to breathe a huge sigh of relief. Wow. 
and it's already it's up there, kind of, and it's moved three quarters of an inch <laughs> since it that has been jacked up, right? So mm -hmm. some people say. What do you mean moved? Lowered? <laughs> no, just like bit. settled. A bit. Yeah, just settled. That's what I mean, yeah, yeah. Depends on, me. but on Thursday, phew, it'll be you yeah. know, solid. Yeah. Gravity still counts. <laughs> it does. Not well, did, Thursday. Forget <laughs> that. I did hear that they just discovered a super volcano under the town hall. Oh, no. <laughs> we were hoping we'd strike gold, you know. But. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. At 46? At 46, you're on. Um, anyway, I'm really glad that Dorothy and Rick are coming. Scott, do um, you want to pull up? No, I'll just... Scott, Scott Bassett. Somebody's got to be in the audience. Pull up. <laughs> we can squeeze yeah, over to all of us. Yeah. yeah. I know you're interested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. And I didn't even make anything to make for Yes. Oh, that's okay. We don't need anything. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is sort of in the Misery Loves Company department, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you got, um, that, that's very apropos. Mm -hmm. um, and what I just wanted to do is kind of touch on a number of issues related to Act 46 that either will definitely uh, demand your attention or um, you may decide that you want to be involved. And I guess this is one of them, the potential lawsuit. This is a litigation hold letter mm -hmm. that went to the state board. Um, the lawyers group that's working with um, Vermonters for schools and community is um, essentially running with this. And there's some really good people involved in this effort. Um, Many of them are, are volunteering their time. Um, there are a few you know, regular lawyers. Um, I think I mentioned to you, Denise, that the, um, if this does go to trial, they're expecting that it could cost up to $50,000. This would be a, a statewide thing. And um, both school districts that have signed on and or towns, municipalities that sign on um, <clears throat> would, you know, be able to decide if they want to contribute. But I think um, there's yeah. also the idea of a legal defense fund. Right. Can we people. use the current, don't you currently have a legal budget in the school budget? Can that be used for this, or does it have to be separate? Uh, I don't know. I, I have got, to find out. I got yeah. the idea from something that was said somewhere. I don't always remember those little details that we could use fund balance money, the current funds. When I yeah. talked to you. Because each, each town and U32 and I guess even the central office all have basically, you know, their slush funds, but in profit. I mean, David Kelly, I talked to him briefly last week. I looked into him and he didn't think it was going to be more than two or three thousand dollars, you know, for. Per, for this. Yeah, oh, for town. Town. Yeah. Or, you know, that yeah. was for, mm -hmm. so I mean, that's, that's not. I'm sorry to interrupt your. Okay. No, 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 this, so these well, are all. Well, the calendar for us is um, the uh, carousel meeting on the 26th. Yeah. Right, that's and then after, and then, so that's the meeting that, that the little towns will all meet separately, the boards. And hopefully they'll all vote to be part of this uh, legal battle. This is our hope, because if we are forced to consolidate, mm -hmm. which is what the state essentially has teed up, and if the state board approves that, um, it's, it's mayhem. Um, what, no matter what happens, I think you will feel um, budget shocks to it. Um, <clears throat> the, what the state, the default articles of agreement that the state has, um, is essentially imposing, would involve the pooling of <coughs> both assets and debt. Um, and what that would mean is essentially just the debt uh, would 
be on the order of $150,000 more per year than what we pay. Basically, a dump truck, mm -hmm. a dump truck a year. <laughs> um, so that, and, and that would be, um, you know, for 14 years, essentially, for the duration of um, East Montpelier's death. Are you getting all that okay for the minutes? I think so. Okay. But um, we're also looking at the possibility of options that would allow Callis to avoid having to take on um, the other town's debt. Um, all of these options are messy. Um, they would involve, for example, if the town takes control of the asset of the school building, then the town will assume responsibility for, um, for negotiating leases with the, with the, the supervisor of the district. Um, the capital, um, you know. Uh, for, I mean, guess, currently that's done by the supervisory. By the supervi yeah, yeah, by the school mm -hmm. and, and on the education side. All of that would shift to the town side. Um, if the uh, other options include the, um, a, a lease that would, essentially what would happen is that school taxes, our school taxes would rise to the level of East Montpelier's, but the district would essentially make us whole by paying us something on the order of $300,000. Because we would, again, we would have to pay $150,000 um, more. And then, in, because of the proportionality of the thing, the, they would, uh, another $150,000 in taxes would have to be collected in order to reimburse us and Worcester fully. So, um, where's that money gonna come from? Uh, from higher taxes all around. Uh, other, Everybody yeah. will be able to see more taxes. Other taxes. Uh, yeah. taxes. <laughs> and they will be they will be reimbursed. There's a, a, a way to reimburse them as well for their so that they're only essentially paying for their share of their original debt. And that's um, gonna make it. And that's going to be done through the State Department of Ed? No. Uh, no, it would be done. It would done be our district. Our district would Washington be. Central would. I would agree. Uh, we have you know, about four options that have been laid out mm -hmm. that we can consider. And the first job is to make sure they're legal. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so we've got that to go through. But um, it's, it, it, my biggest hope is that this legal teams will um, make put enough pressure and bring some injunction so nothing actually happens. Mm -hmm. They say we have to consolidate, but it would all be put off mm -hmm. and not happen right. on their on their schedule and maybe until the end we forgets have to it. what? Until everybody forgets about it. Or depending on who we you know, who gets elected on November sixth, mm -hmm. if we can get th these other towns, I mean uh, I know down south, um, as most of you know, my daughter in law is the chair of the Dumberston School yeah, Board I saw that. there in in a big um, mess there. And they're working at making sure people get elected to the legislature. Who support their position, mm -hmm. and we're hoping that you know the towns in the Northeast Kingdom and all of those places do the same yeah. thing. Yeah, there have been a significant do. number of resignations. I mean, people like Dave Sharp, chair. I mean, he's not running again. Right. Yeah. They've, they've taken quite a beating on this, so yeah. you know, I mean, that wave of that wave of resistance is rising, and that right. It's I a think big they resistance. they counted on it going the other way. Mm -hmm. That it just hasn't proven to be. No, and and what mo many many people don't realize is that those towns that consolidated, they were given a carrot, and they have money taken off their taxes. Well, that money comes out of the education fund, so there's less available for all the people who haven't done that. I think so it's, it's really been we're already being punished. Is there? going to be an opportunity for the towns that jumped in immediately and consolidated. I know of some of the stuff that I've seen, they wish they hadn't now. 
Right. Are they going to be able to go uh, back? Well, I think after people work on this present problem and get past that, they may work on what they call an off-ramp mm -hmm. for those who already jumped, jumped out. Yeah, they did it too soon. They didn't think they right. could fight it, and they're, they're in. Just happened well, that's just what happened in Maine. They ended up making it voluntary, and yeah. a lot bailed out. I just, I just noticed in the Valley, I forgot, there's so many different Valley newspapers, but the one that takes in Harvard Union, that they're now proposing a $21 million bond yeah. Right to add, and I'm going like, how is that saving money? You know, and what little <coughs> schools are going to be closed? Well, yeah, because they're having to take this. These little schools are going to be closed, and they want all these kids to go to this go one school, school, but the yeah. school's not meant to handle that capacity. So now they got to do all these renovations. It's probably the same article I read that you read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I read it in the valley, and I only read part of it because my order was ready at the red hand, and I couldn't open it. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I got the gist of it. That's all I needed. It was the cross that broke. Yeah. Anyway, Denise, I know that you are, um, you generally try to, you know, do, do your budgets so that the impact, the overall impact on taxpayers is minimal. Yeah. Um, if, and, and you're under pressure when school budgets mm -hmm. go up. Well, they just blame us for the budget as a whole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. Well, um, uh, and so uh, this is probably going to really complicate things for you. Um, I hope. I hope it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you know we don't have to deal with it. I hope that the state board will oh, yeah. see the light and all of that. No, but no. Um, I guess one has to be prepared for the for the worst mm -hmm. and. I mean, I but I don't see our select board, even if our school state taxes actually the same, and, and that would also depend on the rest of the state, of course. But I don't see our select board doing anything different than they always do, and keeping them cost down as best well, they can. Yeah, yeah that's what we I don't. I don't think that they would change. We just change. point out where the costs are coming from. That's where. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the town budget generally does not go up a lot. No, we work really hard not to have it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and school budgets are generally driven by administration, and these days more and more by special education, mm -hmm. but also um, by not keeping up with maintenance. And capital replacement, and having to, you know, having to bond. But they did a lot of good things in our school this summer. Yeah, uh, the building. Yeah, you know. We are we're we're really caring right we, now. Yeah, we, we are the exception. But we have a really, we have a really good building in really good shape, thanks yeah. to the school board. Right. Well, we, we, I tell you, we're carrying probably two hundred thousand dollars right now in that capital fund, which, if we're forced to consolidate, <laughs> and if we own that, kind of, I would recommend we spend it to zero because. <laughs> It oh. goes to East Montpelier if we don't. Mm -hmm. Then, it, but that that capital fund becomes part Spread of the greater out. good. Yeah. yeah. And if we're, you know, frankly, that's not why the townspeople of yeah. Cala saved it. That's why East Montpelier had to spend eight million dollars right, because they didn't, they didn't do it. Right. And so, that's you know that that's going to be my recommendation when the time comes. Now, a couple of questions. The whole and I. I asked one on something you said, now I can't remember what it was, but the whole idea of, oh, I know what it is. Is there any way through all this Act 46 stuff that they're looking at the supervisory offices themselves? Maybe you have a Washington, you know, you have a, you know how the transportation agency has like six different districts or something in the state instead of, I don't know, is there, are they looking at all on ways to cut costs in the supervisory union budget? Because every time that comes up, that gets passed over really, really quickly. Yeah, it appears they've been kind of held harmless in all of this. Right. I don't know. 
Scott, if you've come across I mean, some of those superintendents make a lot of money. Well, yeah. they're over what, four salaries or more. They're over 100000 in that, mm -hmm. in well, that superintendent's in office. In the superintendent's office. In, uh, in our office. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they're making more than an assistant attorney yeah, general so our, everybody else, you know. Our superintendent so, makes $125,000 a year. Right. Right. And he got Joe a Kimble. $20,000, $17,000. We paid for his Ph.D. And we, you know, and the time. Why? I wasn't on the board. I wouldn't have. I wasn't on there either. And they gave him a five-year contract at the same time they yeah. did that, which is really unheard of. But right. Oh well, that's where we are. And there, and there's pressure. <laughs> they they keep coming in with, oh well, you know, the average in the state is 140. You know, so. Well, no that's where I think pressure. some of the pressure needs to come back down to is. Let's start looking at some of that stuff and pointing that out. Yeah. Well, then and I know you've and I know you've tried, but it gets like it gets pushed away every single time it comes well, out. Well, well, I, I kept it down below the the big ones. I think they've. I think largely when you look at it, and I think the superintendents' association and you know the state school board, and they seem to all be in bed together. Well, I mean, that's they're why in the same building. So for they're kind of holding well. each other harmless in all this. <laughs> Right, and, and that's what supporting. I, right, and that's what I've noticed. And yeah. it's like I don't know how many other people notice it. If I do, probably everybody else does too. Yeah. Yeah. I. Well, I mean, I would look. You look in even urban areas. I mean, their superintendents that have over 100 schools. They manage 100 to 200 schools. In other know, states. In other states, but a superintendent is a superintendent. I mean, my God. I mean, if if that's the case, why do we have the superintendent's office? That I mean, I know from my prior time on the school board. Like Lauren Bebo's accounting staff was running at a small percentage of their ability. We were looking at the possibility of taking in contract work from nonprofits and things like that as a revenue source because they, they shared their running so efficiently. That there wasn't enough to do. There wasn't enough to do. So, you know, to me, that says something, you know, because they're basically an administrative body. Right. And they, they also, you know, I, I don't know, it turns into some policy level decision making. Mm -hmm. but. Increasingly, I think the power, you know, and largely lobbied by, lobbied by AOE has been going away from the towns and going to the, That's what I'm the about. bureaucracy. I mean, you so. can't even have your own website now, which I really object to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, trying to find anything. That's what happened in our district. I'm trying to find exactly. anything on that website is really challenging. Yeah. Well, it's my biggest complaint find. is whenever I go on that website and I want to look up the school board, each town has it some buried, not just somewhere yeah, else, but buried somewhere mm -hmm. else because you cannot find it. Mm -hmm. I know. I've tried. I've poked around. <laughs> and and apparently, and there was some, a, a time when somebody in the center, whoever does the IT, wasn't doing the right stuff, and mm -hmm. I guess they're gone now. But it takes a while to straighten everything out once it's all tangled up. Now this. Well, what about our our bill, our school billing itself? And there's all this talk about if the mergers go through, that the state would then own our building. Is that in? That's not yeah, part the, of the, the school district. district. Wait, it's the that that actually is. Is that in this part part of the, in here? the takings okay. clause? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Because it sounds like a taking to me. Yeah. yeah. It is. The it's taking of way. that and and the funds. And the funds. Right. That's right. 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 Yeah. yeah. But back to what you were saying about the supervisory unions, Denise, there is sort of an infinitesimal move in that direction with us. Um, we're starting to talk with Twinfield. Yeah, I saw that. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Twinfield so, and Cabot. Well, I would love to get Cabot um, involved with this, too. They're great. Yeah, they are. Um, uh, Twinfield is more passive, mm -hmm. uh, I have the feeling. Um, Sorry, Twinfield. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but at any rate, it, that would entail the um, the liquidation of the Washington Northeast. But I thought that that was being liquidated it anyway. Is. It is. So, so they're looking for a new home, a new home. No, I just yes. uh, yeah. yeah. Well, they're they're looking for something. A dance partner is there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I know the guy. Well, there was one meeting I went to, and there was. A gentleman there from either Twinfield or Cabot that stood up and sp spoke. It was one of the meetings at U32 when it was mm -hmm. really hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, um, I think a 
on one occasion they were both there. They were both they were at, at yeah. one of the meetings yeah. they were at, yeah. I mean, you and I visited. We went to the Catholic yeah. school yeah. meetings. Yeah. So. I mean, there, you know, there's got to be, maybe there's opportunities, you know, for yeah. sharing different things, resources. Mm -hmm. There are definitely opportunities. and. I mean, the only good thing about this whole thing is, is it's made people start to think about what other mm -hmm. opportunities there are out there. What can we share? What can we do different? So that's about the only good thing I can see that's come out of yeah. this. The bad thing is that it ties your hands into really not being able to do that and do out of the box. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that it's it's almost scary right. how this has been directed down and funneled. <laughs> it funneled to the <laughs> municipalities. So let me ask you this about this litigation hold thing. You guys are going to talk about it on the 26th? Yes. And then will the school boards, the school board will vote to join, we join hope in that or not? We would like to. We would plan? Plan? It would be helpful if we can get any, in fact, and if you were able to. Right, but the that. select board doesn't have to do anything no. with this. The select board doesn't have to. However, if you want to, that, it would, that be, would be good. That would be helpful. If the okay. But it's board, entirely up to you. It's just, right. So it wait, shows yeah. solidarity of town. Right. I think we've shown solidarity right along. With, so. with right. But if you have it in yeah. out a piece there. of paper with your signatures, it means more. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know if it certainly doesn't mean more to the agency of education because okay. the towns that <laughs> voted three times no and once it was unanimous no and they said that was just sentiment. <laughs> so they obviously were not paying attention. Well, that's in here about the votes. Yeah. Right. I saw yeah. That. yeah. But I yeah. mean, what? Uh, a lot of the other districts who are fighting this are getting their legislators mm -hmm. and senators to write letters in support of what they want, right. their AGSs. And of course, all our, Kim uh, Jessup. Jessup got a, drafted a letter that all our legislators and senators signed way back in December when we had to right. file gonna, our agency. Is she going to do it in another one? Well, I don't know. She spoke at the meeting on August 15th. Yeah, I was at that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Um, yeah. yeah, and um, it, it just always helps to have something that, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is a something, because there is the resolution that we uh, we literally signed. Oh, that's right. Yes. Well, the resolution, the resolution. Yeah, that kind that's of right. counts, too. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, that's mean, fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had forgotten about yeah. But, if Eddie, there's Eddie, something, just, but if there's something else, if you guys vote to join into this and we can do a simple letter to say we support and applaud our school board members, someone that we can do that. Well, I think the reality is in this, too. You know, you look and they keep trying to undermine the mm -hmm. idea that there is not community support. This is just right. a road board. Mm -hmm. Anything you can put in there, this is clearly right. not that. But well, actually, if some of you could come to that meeting, I'm planning at, to. At, at, yeah. at, on the 26th. What time does it start? Well, the... the I can never find the agendas. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the merry-go-round <laughs> part with all of them starts, I think, at either 5 or 5.30. Well, that's all gotten changed because they messed up the invitation. Yeah, I just yeah. got an just email. But then um, the local school boards meet in their individual rooms at 7 or 7.30. Uh, so that's the merry-go-round meeting is uh, first. Uh, carousel, carousel meeting. Carousel. I call it merry-go-round. Yeah. I, I do too. But um, that's first, and there will be discussions there about mm -hmm. this whole thing. Because if that's going to happen, I'd like to be there for that, and then yeah, the and you could it. probably yeah. speak at that too. I would too. I think they, they don't like it when you speak. Doesn't matter. No, no, never mind whether they like it, it or not. But I'm just saying they they really don't. They open up. They don't really like Every once in a while, they will say, "Does anybody want to say anything?" And then you you know mm -hmm. you, you do it. Now let me ask you this: Is the full Callis School Board on board with this? Are there? Any? Yes, I would say. You think, Susanna? I, I would. Uh, what? Susanna. I don't. I Susanna because the rest of us are. Uh, I would. I would yeah. say. I, but I'm, I'm fairly sure certain that, that we'll Katie that. is, mm -hmm. and um, my guess is that Chris. Chris is because he came back to Cowles because he wanted his kids to right. go to that school. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and his mother had, yep. so has loaned the school the property for our leech right. field. I was going to say we I have mean, a very involved family. Right. I was going to say I have a copy of a deed <laughs> with that. So. Yeah. Wow. yeah, so I would say there's at least four of us. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Suzanne, I think, doesn't, if 
fight it. Okay. Yeah. The U32 board is a is a much bigger question. Yep. Yeah. Is it? Because yeah. I wondered about that because I know there's a couple on there that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's um, uh, the U32 board is pretty split. Hmm. But I'm hoping this is. This is not about merger. The U32 board is split on merger. Mm -hmm. This isn't about merger. This is really about rule of law. Mm -hmm. And I hope they can see yeah, the difference. Which yeah. pointing this out as rule of law is a good way to go at right. it. Right. Because it really, right. really is. Right. But I just support merger or not doesn't have anything I'll just to do with never, the law. Yeah. I'll well, never forget when we were in Newark for that first meeting of the school boards. Mm -hmm. And um, Margaret got up to speak. Margaret Meacham? Margaret. McLean. Well, McLean. Oh, yeah. McLean. Oh, McLean. And and she uh, prefaced part of it with I and I didn't really hear all of it because she had like a comment about Trump in there too. But <laughs> she said that she and her husband had taught in, behind the Iron Curtain in the 1980s, and that's where she was kind of talking about voting, and and I missed that. But then, and she spoke for her allowed two minutes. She's really good at it that, at that. And at the end, she said. Votes count, democracy matters. And she said it twice, and by the third time, the whole room said it in unison. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just gave me the chills. Mm -hmm. it yeah. Really, really. Well, it speaks volumes. Oh, it does. It's but like then to have the whole, right. the whole gymnasium, mm -hmm. which was about, I would say, it's about the science of calluses, wouldn't you? Right. Oh, you weren't I there. there. I couldn't make Scott, it. you would. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, where was this meeting? It was in Newark, Vermont. Oh, you said that. Yes. Up in um, way up. the northeast kingdom. Yeah. Not, yeah. not way, way up, way up, but not way, way. Yeah. <laughs> kind of the middle of the way up. Yeah. <laughs> and real east. Mm -hmm. The one comment I wanted to make, Scott, uh, going back to when you were laying out options on which is appealing, is uh, it would go way too much into the weeds for you to actually answer a question, but I just. I just want to say out loud that I'm sure you're considering the fact that once you've taxed, and you know we've all paid that tax, even if there's a circling back and a refund, how do you redistribute that back into the taxpayers' pockets? Is an, is an, another huge messy question. It so it sounds good on yes. the surface. I don't think it even sounds good right on the okay. surface. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's all. Sure. I wanted to say that. But that's a good statement that you yeah. said because right. everything that was thrown at us about the Act 46 when, mm -hmm. when at the very very beginning mm -hmm. of 706 yeah. meetings. And they would, we would say, well, what about this? And they would say whatever they had to say, which made it sound good on the surface, and that's unless you jumped. drilled in. Right. And then it was like, oh no, it, that after it's five years they can follow, follow, the follow the dollars. That's right. what they say. Well, well and, I, and I want to know how I get it back. Yeah. Right. Well, and I know the select board in Richmond is sorry that they ever their school ever decided to merge. Right. Well, but the it's going to cost them more money. The flip of that, though, is that they walked into that and they did not, they could have opposed it. They could have, but they And this is what didn't. towns make a choice, and, you know, that's mm -hmm. the... But, but their lessons learned are, are to our benefit. So right. that's another follow the money. Why why are they sorry? What is costing them more? Is, mm -hmm. it, is it because busing. they have... They have the busing. busing. <clears throat> Bloated, bloated administration, right? Yes. And that, and you know, now they're finding out that their school isn't big enough, right? And we're only a few years in, right? It only gets worse, right? Yeah. So there, I mean, there's a lot to this, and that's why I wonder, you know, this off ramp thing, you know, if they've tried, if they were going into this now and finding out, wait a minute, this is going to cost us this much more, then that should be. A valid reason for being able to say, "Never mind, we changed our minds." No, I think they've tied their political skins to every yeah, party. All, to all the somewhere. schools have now been redeeded, or whatever they did, and right, all the all money has been redistributed. And the other thing too is that um, you know we've been getting a small towns grant mm -hmm. that was so that's going to go away, right? And school, as yeah. long as all the places that consolidated. They still get the small schools grant. It doesn't go directly to that school, but it goes into the general pot. But the rest of us are not going to get it without having applying for it every year and having to jump over a bar or two. Right. Well, see, they're making all these and things. And that's another punishment. That is another punishment, just like the punishment that you talked about earlier. Yeah. 
Um, you know, it's but gonna, is there much money in the education fund now? Right. Well, and also that you're going to have to do your own lease of this and scheduling of that and hiring this and that one because that's another punishment. One they can still close the school, you know, and leave you with a shell, mm -hmm. you know, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Which is. Uh, and you know, government sh is not about punishment. And there's one thing that be. we, no, no. the one thing that we never are able to hear from the one se sector that I have never heard from because they're afraid, and that's the, the teachers. teachers. Right, because our teachers never hear from the teachers. But aren't some of the teachers with, through all of this going to lose jobs? Well, yeah, well, the schools the, are closed. The, but the, oh, yeah. But my, if I were a teacher, what I would be worried about is that. Well, I'm doing a good job here in Calais, and right. I like it and so forth, and not so bad a drive. And um, when somebody is directing all the schools, they can say, okay, Dorothy yeah. Naylor, we want you to teach in Middlesex next right. year. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and you don't have much to say about it. No. Well, I think and the same way with the principals. Mm -hmm. That happens now. What? Well, I, I mean, my... It yeah. doesn't happen now. No. They aren't forced to do it. Mm -hmm. If there's an opening, they can apply for it. And, right. they, and they, a lot of them do. But they that's a choice. They they have a choice. They can be offered it or whatever. But they they get a contract for for Calus unless for some reason they can't or for each one. Yeah. I see. You're saying that they would have a, have a have a district or something. It would be a district wide and contract, they, and, yeah. and, and they come to you anywhere. Point you to Riff rights, everything was were protected with to to go with teach in Berlin, mm -hmm. for instance. Oh my! What a call. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Stick in there with this. And yeah. so, well, this is one that, I mean, you this one hits us all, man. Yeah, it does. It does hit us all. Scott, yeah. I'm sorry to have to torture you with this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for supporting But you guys us. meet you've every two weeks. A lot more than we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just we, getting we ready to meet every week pretty right. soon. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you've been out there regularly, and it, it's made a difference, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Those yeah. meetings. Well, because I don't this know that it's made a difference. No, it has. You know what? Because they, so? the yeah. one, one club they are using in this is not having public votes. They say, oh, this is just rogue. Mm -hmm. A few rogue board members, yeah. but when we, we have select boards show up and townspeople, and mm -hmm. I mean, that was a, when Mac stood up at that <laughs> meeting, that <laughs> was a priceless oh, moment. Was, that was I was crazy. watching was their great. faces on that phone. Their... But it was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did they, oh, I know, so Jay Denault, is that the right guy's name? Yeah. 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 Filed that. Uh, oh, yeah. That open thing, meeting. Open meeting did. law violation. Yeah, which was great. Yeah. Because yeah. when she was doing that, I'm thinking, she can't do that, yeah. but she did it. And I was thinking, well, in, in April, that meeting we had, they didn't shove any, I mean, there were 50 people at each right. doorway at that meeting. Right, there was and people yeah, sitting, people on, the sitting on the floor and everything floor. else. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was not okay to do well, that. And then so. when he tried to get back in, there were empty seats and they wouldn't let him in. Yeah. Give me a break. I mean, so what is that, you know, I don't know what that's going to accomplish other than maybe they got to do a redo. No, well, I think what he wants is that they have to admit it in public mm -hmm. that they did it, to so just to show that they're just obnoxious. They are obnoxious. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact that they gave an hour to that, you know, while we watched that oh. dog and pony show oh. from well, they did Madison in Newark, County, and they're while they're giving it again. the schools who are actually asking, you know, they're giving them 10 minutes or right. something, and then, you know, they're giving a suburban school system a chance, which we've heard time and time again, yeah, sure, it might work for you. I bet there's some of the towns that it didn't work for, right. or well being one of them. <laughs> you know, and, and that, uh, yeah. you know, that's the thing that I find really bothersome. Yeah. It was, they, well, didn't, they was, didn't need that time. We needed that time. Right. I thought what Susan Clark said at the meeting at the State House was really good. Yeah, she's good. Yeah, there's yeah. violence. There's, there's, it is, it is yeah, violence it is. to do what they're trying to do. Yes, it is. All right, so, f well, I've got written down 5.30, but if you guys could let us know. We sent you a copy of the agenda. Actually, what happened yeah, is that they inadvertently told us it was at 11.30 to 12. <laughs> <laughs> and the email came out today canceling that, and we'll get another one tomorrow that has the right name. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the 26th, right? 26th, yeah. so that's a Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Last Wednesday of October. Yeah. We're going to yeah. have to miss oh. our other meeting, I guess. Right? Yeah. Well, our... Really oh yeah, yeah. you guys are with the Plainfield, right? Because we don't. Have a I want to know. Forum. We have to, and then we're talking about a 
something that we probably right. have to be there for. Right. Mm. That's a problem. Oh, yeah. that is a problem. We might be able to be there be for there, the... We could be there from 6 to 7 and be a little late for our meeting. Right, we might be able to be there for the 5.30 piece, yeah. maybe not the individual school board meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's fine. I mean, you're, you're, the, you're so present at these things. If you, there's, you, you have to be present at a whole bunch of things. <laughs> So um, if you're not able to make it, it's really okay. Well, but we can say we can say that you were going to come, but, we are but you had this other meeting mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. because you were interested in what we're doing. I think. Yeah, I could write something up. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I'm just going to say, yeah, we did that resolution. We spent yeah, we spent a lot. We spent a lot of time yeah. on it, and I don't think you guys should be afraid to bring copies of it everywhere. No, you, just yeah. everywhere yeah. you go. I took it's copies so to the true. state house on the 15th and to say yeah. our select board yeah. had. The yep. conflict tonight, but they asked us to bring bring the resolution bring again. The resolution yeah, resolution again. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So if we can't be there, then yeah. Great. Because I need to get from you or you or some. I have to call the Plainfield Health Center tomorrow because I lost her name again. She's been a PA over there for thirty years. Kim. Kim. Years? Yeah. Then she did that faces of aces. Yeah, aces mm -hmm. study. And I saw that, and I asked. U32 it's really good. Rule 32 is putting on the resilience mm -hmm. and having a discussion. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I wrote to, that would be great. to yeah. Bill and Kathy Bushy, or Kelly Bushy, about the faces of aces. I said it really, really, mm -hmm. it's shorter and it just really, it really puts a good face mm -hmm. on that resilience yeah. film. Right. Yeah. And Ka Kelly said, well, we've all already planned everything, which I expected that from her. But I got an email from Bill tonight saying, Bill can, Kimball? Yeah, can you get a hold of it for oh, me? Oh, great. Oh, so good. I'm going to call over there tomorrow. I'm doing a little brownie point for that. Yeah. One. <laughs> it, was, she, it was well done, but when I saw it, it was um, Capstone had put on uh, this on the 23rd. I think it was mostly for, um, uh, lost one of those. The, the Agency on Aging? No, it was a Head Start people. Oh, mostly okay. for Head Start right. people. Yep. And she said that when she showed that film on the 23rd, it was the first public viewing she'd had mm -hmm. of it. And she showed it around to various people. Kim? Yeah. yeah. But it's She's done. very proud of one it. Of the done guy, a lot of work. One of the guys that she became, began to use this basis thing on, and he, anyway, bottom line is, right in that show, she says he quit drugs. Mm -hmm. yep. And then at the end, after it was over, he, he, she said that she was the only one he had confided in, not even his family. And once he confided in her and made the decision, then he told everybody because that helped him stay quit. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's, he's now, and, now, and he's now several years clean. Yeah. And from and Kim's. Heart and soul. Is oh, oh you yeah, can see that. Yeah. Oh, oh so yeah. 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 Her heart and soul. She just fire. said, I, you know, she started out by saying she'd been there for 30 years until mm -hmm. she saw in her third or fourth generation of families mm -hmm. and she sees the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And that where they need help. Are you on the board over there too, Doc? No. Oh, God, I've got nothing to do. I don't yeah. need to say anybody else. <laughs> you have no idea how buried I am. <laughs> Thanks, we appreciate all your hard work. Don't hearts. get our dose thing. We're going to miss out on a grant now, an opportunity for a grant because you guys haven't given us the answer about the. Are we going to miss it? We're going to we're trying to get this. At, uh, I haven't. There is an opportunity well, for a grant. But What's the date? The, I'm good. Do, the grant applications do October first. So we. Should. Well, why don't we start filling it out? Get it all ready to go. And now it's ready to go. We'll, we'll try to we'll we'll push it. it. I mean, I'm I'll, look at, I'll look at the grant stuff again. So what was the thing about the, the recreation yeah. field isn't good for the winter? Is that yeah, well, it's not or maintained. Winter? Yeah, in the oh. winter. It really, it's, I think it's the school. We, I thought we had talked about that in the board no, meeting. It, no, I was thinking, as Chris said, I'll see about that. If we can do that, and then it yeah. sort of dropped. Well, but I remember there was a discussion around it just not being maintained in the winter. Right. So that made sense to cut. I mean, we and also part about. of it was to get people to the school that don't normally go to the school. <laughs> yeah. So. Right. But they're I think the main, about the main concerns were just. They're worried.
worried about knees being dropped on the ground. And all I don't think there's any problems like that at the current <laughs> Right, well, and if it's at the school, people might be more respectful. Right. Mm -hmm. then if All there's right. some contingency in place where if it does, if we do find that, yeah. that we have to Okay. Well, I'll take a look at it again because there's an opportunity for a composting yeah. 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 something else. I can't remember now what. Because I didn't really focus on it because... I apologize. We've had a lot on our plate. Yes, I know. <laughs> and I realize that the dump isn't one of the most important things, but we do we have a lot here. Can we put it in the super dense part? I read that article by. I don't know, it might be a little bit too far for <laughs> it's too far. people to drive. That's right. It's yeah. too yeah. far. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. All right. I like this thing all right, so we're going to hopefully talk about the draft road naming policy next meeting. Yeah. Can you get a draft ready? For yeah. That? Okay. Yep. All right, and then I'm going to do my chair update, and then I'm going to ask that we do the minutes, and then um, I'd like to go into executive session to talk about a personnel matter at the very end. All right, so here's my update. Um, and you guys are going to need to make some notes so you can get back to me with dates. We need to do a joint meeting with the Cemetery Commission and representatives of the Poplar Cemetery, which is currently a privately owned cemetery. We may ask Jim Barlow to join us. Um, the Poplar Cemetery group is out of business, or I don't know what the right word is, but... Dissolving. Dissolving, that's the word. They're looking for the town to take over Poplar Cemetery. and. So anyways, I think we should meet with the Cemetery Commission and the Pop and somebody from the Poplar Cemetery because I think there's a lot of questions that need answering. It sounds like it's in pretty bad repair, the Poplar Cemetery. So if you could look at dates, I'd like to get that scheduled sometime this month if we can. Doesn't have to be a, doesn't have to be a Monday necessarily. And you said you're going to have Jim join us. I think I think it would make sense, don't you? Yep. Yeah. Um, just because I think there's, no, you know, there's deeds, there's a transfer of ownership, there's money. There's I a already, do we have to do it. Right, right. I already talked to Sandra, you know, do they have some kind of money left over that they're going to transfer exactly. the town? Where's that and how much? Out? And is there, is there cemetery perpetual care? Do they have enough money in their funds to continue the perpetual care? Or is that going to be up to the callous taxpayers now? I think there's, there's just a lot of questions <coughs> that I, as I'm thinking about this, and I've talked to Jim some, and I've talked to the Cemetery Commission some, but <coughs> I think we just need to have a joint meeting and get it all out there. Um, there's a meeting on September 18th at 7 o'clock at the Adamat Community Center that the Planning Commission is hosting to meet with the Adamat residents because they're looking at changing zoning and maybe parts of Adamant will be in the Shoreland Overlay District. <coughs> so that might, just if you have nothing to do the evening of September 18th, which is a Tuesday. And it's a meeting with? The Planning Commission planning. residents, you know, the residents that are affected are getting a direct invitation. There will be a regular Planning Commission agenda as well. And but this is going to be strictly to talk about this seven. <clears throat> um, that's it for meeting stuff. But just like I said, check your calendars. So when I start, just see if I can round everybody up for this joint meeting with the cemetery people. Um, Cliff and I, as you know, still meet with the staff. And they mentioned as part of their discussions that there's a lot of keys floating around. People have keys to the, <coughs> to get into the office. There's not very many people have keys to get into there. And the vault is locked after hours and on weekends. But they just feel like they don't have a list of everybody in town that has a key. So they don't know. Those keys have been handed out and then 
sublet to others. Right, and then you can't, then somebody can't remember who they lent their key to, so now they want another key. So it's, it's not a, it's not been a very good process. Mm -hmm. um, so as we're talking about this, they mentioned something about, we talked about a keypad, you know, when those things you punch a code into and, you know, would have to be changed every quarter or every six months or something like that. Um, and if you get the code and you forget what it is, you're out of luck. But, so anyways, just, just know that that discussion is going on. That makes a lot of sense. The code? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're not hard. No. Probably not even very expensive. Right. So that discussion is kind of in the works about what to do about that. They tried to come up with a list of everybody had keys. I have, because I've been on the board a while, I have like 10 different keys. Because this lock's been changed once, the deadbolt was changed once, <laughs> the lock at the town hall was changed, you know, then there's the key to here. So there's, there's a lot of keys out there. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Could only start from scratch. Well, change that, a lot. That's what we talked about. Yeah. That. With the plan and then, so. right. then the plan is to change the locks, but the yeah. question is keys or the code, the punch the code pad. I think it would be cumbersome to change the, the, the code to get the code pad if, you, if it had to be changed change. every four months. Because right. then you got to remember who has the, who gets yeah. the codes. Yeah. I think that's cumbersome. But that's and then one of the ideas was that, well, only the chairs of commissions would have keys or the code, but that doesn't really work either because if somebody's out sick or on vacation or in France, then, then they can't get in. That doesn't make sense either. So, anyways, it's a for, it's for further discussion and thought. So either way, it seems like it's whether whether the code gets changed or the locks get changed. There needs to be some way of just like the credit card, just like the credit card. Right. Who is authorized to have a key? Well, we initially we had a paper. You know, when it was all kept track on, but then because of all the changes, I think right. that didn't happen, and then it's not going to be okay for somebody to lend their key to somebody else. It's mm -hmm. not okay. Right, exactly. You know, that's got to be. That's not okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So now that we have Barbara in the office, she's doing a lot of these kind of things. Mm -hmm. So, because she's been helping Katie with the appointment spreadsheet, getting additional information, so now's the time to do it. Anyways, I didn't want to make it a huge discussion, but I'm just letting you know that that's in the, in the works phone system. Yeah, it, um, it's conceivable that uh, we could get a uh, phone system established in here, uh, a multi-line type system. Um, the staffers were tasked with coming up with their uh, wish list mm -hmm. of what they'd want, and I said, you know, start with the sky's the limit and then we'll talk about what is practical and real mm -hmm. that we could achieve. Um, and it looks like we could get a decent system, um, at least an upfront one-time cost that's going to be $4,000 or less. Um, and the bigger cost is really what is the recurring charge is going to be for having multiple lines coming into the building and if we can get any kind of bundle uh, package or something from um, Consolidated. Uh, so I am uh, researching that and um, in the meantime they've uh, made some, uh, Judy specifically made some uh, calls to uh, other townships to talk about what they're running and what works for them and what doesn't and how they achieved it and mm -hmm. what they would do differently. Oh, right yeah. Yeah, let's check with these Montpelier. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, we have the uh, ability to put in. Um, I think East Montpelier ended up with a use system that they bought from some guy who contracts out and does this kind of work and then acquires the old systems and mm -hmm. refurbishes and sells them. I don't know if that's an option we need. Um, like I say, we could get uh, an AT&T style multi-line system, which is a lot less complex than a PBX style system, which is what you typically uh, associate with 
when you've got the phone closet with all oh, yeah, the yeah. you know tags in yeah. it. And, um, Trying to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, we just need to be able to have a couple of lines that can talk to each other and be able to forward calls to um, other outside lines. Right. And the and ability for to a check. night service. Right. And so check remotely. Check your messages remotely. Mm -hmm. They can't do that now. I don't know if they can do it now or not, can they? They can check, but it's only on one line and, um, right. mm -hmm. you know, any number of things. Um, we wouldn't, the, the consensus is, is that we didn't want to get into, you know, a, a totally automated, you know, call in and person has to punch in a bunch of numbers and right. whatnot. The expectation is people call in and they talk to a person. They still get a person, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then... The exception would be if we need to put it on night service because there's only one person in the office for whatever reason and they're in the middle of something, have right. the ability to do that, but that's not the default stance. Right, right. A real person is the default right, stance. Right, yeah, we all agree on that, that we mm -hmm. still want a live person to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Well, and what you're describing isn't push a bunch of numbers, it's it goes straight to a voicemail. Right, exactly. Which, if there's yeah. nobody available. Yeah. And at the most, you might have a front end that says, you know, if you want the listers, punch one. If you want the town office clerk, press two. Right, Something when you get the voicemail. And then right. you get a voicemail. Right. Yeah. And night service may just go to a general mailbox. Then whoever the operator is that comes in and checks those can push them yeah. to right. the appropriate yeah. party. Right. Um, to be continued. Right. So a few things that I have on my list for <clears throat> next meeting are um, road naming policy draft. It doesn't have to be review it in draft. Um, I'm going to work on a draft credit card policy. When I was doing, when I was working with um, Alfred on what we're going to discuss in executive session. I realized that the road crew job description did not include a reference to the road um, road and bridge standards. So I added that to the job description and included it. But I think we need to re-vote on the um, job description. And then I think we also need to s decide that we're going to make sure that each road crew person has a copy of that job description. Um, right. Um, I'm going to take go back to where we left off on the personnel policy and hopefully get another draft of that available. Um, I'm not promising by the 24th, but I'd like to get it done this year. No, this calendar year. Um, Jay Copping has agreed to be the town health officer. Oh, good. Yeah. I've been talking with him back and forth, so we'll do that appointment next meeting. He was one of the names we listed, right? Right. What's he now? He's in, he works at um, the health center. Oh, awesome. He's a nurse. He's yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was at CBH. Now he's there. Um, on the 24th, we'll get an update from the Center Vermont ISP either David Healy and Scott together or one or the other. See where that's at, because it's been, I think they've had a quarter's worth of meetings now, something like that. Hmm. So we'll get an update. We just don't want to let that fall off the radar. Hmm. We have things happen that we don't know about. Hmm. Right. Um, we want our hundred, we want our thousand. Thousand dollars? Or a thousand whatever per minute. Yeah. Multi-million megabyte. Right. Oh. Up and down. That's what I want. Okay. And that's what I have for chairs update. Then we'll do the minutes, and then if we'll entertain an executive session, I hope. Okay, the only minutes we have are the minutes of last meeting. And you made changes. I looked at your changes. They look fine to me. Me, I made changes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything? I made some minutes? changes on paper um, okay. just because I Where did you I wasn't them? having That's any how you do or Yeah, I wasn't I, Yeah, so anyway. Um, so where are you? 
under right at the beginning under public comment mm -hmm. um, the first sentence Scott Bastage commented on the status of the grant dot dot the historic preservation was formed to get as much as Callis designated as a historic district as possible so the historic preservation was formed many years ago and it has its own mission and that was not why oh, yeah. it was so I don't I think either we should look at what the mission was and probably is to um, preserve and maintain the historic structures in town. So that's why that historic preservation, one of their... Um, Maybe you can give your... Can I, can I make yeah, a comment? Yeah, one of their things is that they go after grants and, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't think that's important that... So that we could wrap the minutes by just striking mm -hmm. and say, Scott Bassage reported that the Historic Preservation Commission received a grant. Or did they receive it or they're applying yeah, they, for it? Um, they received a grant. Oh, yeah. They received it, right. So just go straight to that. That's Yeah, yep, take that, that next right sentence. Yep, and then yep. we're going to have to research. Yep. Right. Yep. And then on. Um, Hang on, Kate's got to come. Yep. Mm hmm. Where are you going to next? Um, page two, number eight A, mm -hmm. the town hall renovation committee. Mm -hmm. um, so the first sentence, John McCullough and I <coughs> propose that it says John McCullough reported that the necessary demolition of the town hall is finished. <coughs> demolition of the town hall is finished. And then um, under number 12, approve the hiring of John McCullough. Yeah, that was one place I could have made a change if I wanted, if I thought about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So see if you think yeah, the same thing. Um, the first sentence reads, the bids for hiring an architectural consultant, and I propose to write on the town hall renovation project came in at 48,000. Yep. And then yep. um, in the next sentence, when you call John, mm -hmm. put his last name there, mm -hmm. if you would please. John McCullough has voted to this project, his blah, blah, blah. And is having. And then. Um, he, yeah, and is having. Not and and instead of his it's is. There you go. Is it declined or declined other jobs? What how does that read now? You could say and is declined and or has and had to decline. Yeah. And has had to decline other jobs. And has had to decline, okay. Yeah. Um and then I guess it went to the next page, but just changed the word committee to, pre I mean, the same topic. Mm -hmm. but yeah, change the word committee to project. So we officially hired him as the consultant for the town hall renovation project. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think, oh, and then the last page, mm -hmm. number 24. For Old West Church, right the, there it is on the right hand side, mm -hmm. right out the word West mm -hmm. for Old West Church. And then um, the very last sentence on number 26. Mm -hmm. The chair updated the board as to the details of the situation, including the requirements, and then mm -hmm. right after requirements. Right, to obtain a burn permit from the forest fire warden and cross off the mm -hmm. rest of that sentence. Mm -hmm. Yep, period. Yep. Is that it? Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs>
Just call me snail mail. <laughs> so is that, did you make a motion to approve? Oh yes, I make a motion to approve the minutes of August 27th and cement it. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion that the board to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters in accordance with 1 BSA section 313A3. So move at 917. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Katie. Thank, Thank you, Katie. Thank I'll you. email you the rest.